and welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday, the day when we remember the coming of the Spirit to the first disciples and the Spirit's continuing presence and power amongst God's people today across the world. Let's join in our opening call to worship. This is the day when the Spirit came. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And our opening hymn is that great hymn by Charles Wesley that unites our praises here on earth to God for all that he has done with those who have gone before and all the company of heaven. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim. do indeed praise and adore you. We praise and thank you for your goodness and might, for your revelation in creation and all that is in it. Most of all we thank you for the gift of your Son Jesus. We thank you for his ministry here on earth and the message of hope that he brings to a fallen world. And we thank you for his life, his death and his resurrection. And on this special day of Pentecost, we thank you that you did not leave us alone when Jesus returned to you, but that you sent your Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, as well as our challenger, renewing us and sustaining us and assuring us of your presence with us. But Lord, we're conscious that we too often have fallen short of the pattern of Jesus that we seek to follow. But we're grateful that you, your promise is always to forgive us when we confess our failings. And we thank you that you move to meet us and to forgive us. Help us to amend our lives and to live more closely with you. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now Alison Morgan is going to share our reading from the New Testament this morning, which comes from the second chapter of the Book of Acts, the day of Pentecost. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't, for the life of them, figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, Immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and, backed by the other eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red, before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvellous. And whoever calls out for help to God will be saved. Thank you, Alison, for that reading. And now we're going to sing again uh, a particular favourite of mine, a song that we often have played uh, in the music group at church uh, and whenever I hear this hymn I, I'm reminded of uh, playing in the group with uh, Carol Lomas and Marion Emery and Meryl Markle and I hope that we'll get a chance to play it again soon. Uh, but for now, a recording from Songs of Praise, There is a Redeemer.
were reminiscing with my mum uh, the other day about our childhood memories of Walking Day. Walking Day fell at Pentecost when the church would turn out on parade to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost out on the streets of the town. Our congregations in Nails in Backwell are made up of people from right across the UK and indeed the wider world and I guess we will all of us have memories of church processions of one sort or another but I don't know how widespread the practice of the wit walk was. Deborah and I we spent parts of our childhood uh, in Manchester and walking day there was a big deal. Uh, Deborah remembers being dressed in a white frock and I can remember being in my Sunday best marching with the Sunday school behind the church banners, uh, the minister in full regalia and the drumbeat of the boys brigade. It was quite a, quite a thing, the Whitson walk. Those walking day processions were uh, a response to the story that we've heard read by Alison from the Acts of the Apostles, the, f the, f the first coming of the Spirit uh, at the Feast of Pentecost. And it, it's, it clearly had a huge impact. It turned upside down the lives of these disciples and indeed the people of Jerusalem. And I guess that our walking day was a way of saying that, you know, we have something to celebrate uh, and it can't be confined to dusty church buildings. Like the first disciples, it's forced us outdoors onto the streets and we just want to share the good news with the world. It's a common place to say that the day of Pentecost is the birthday of the church. And since we're all church, happy birthday, everybody. But like any birthday party of any size or significance, this party was long in the planning. At the beginning of the Bible, we read that God's spirit hovered over the waters of the void at the moment of creation. And later on, Isaiah prophesies the coming of the Messiah on whom God's spirit would rest a spirit of truth and understanding. And John the Baptist's testimony is that when he baptised Jesus in the Jordan, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit of God descend on Jesus like a dove. And in this reading that we've just heard with Peter's first uh, sermon at uh, Pentecost, he quotes the prophet Joel who had prophesied that in the last days God would pour his spirit out on all flesh and for Peter and the disciples that day had been fulfilled. God's gift to the church of his spirit had been long in the planning and it's no accident that the people in Jerusalem could hear the praises of God being spoken in every language. In the Old Testament we read the story of the Tower of Babel when people were cast asunder by the diversity of language. But here on the day of Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit people are being brought back together, rejoined by the power of God's Spirit. The Spirit which brings unity and new life to that which had been split apart. And God's planning for the world and for his people doesn't end with the first Pentecost. The Spirit is with us today, continuing that work of renewal and reunion of God with his people. The Spirit continues to revive and inspire, to repair us and renew us as we are God's people. It was a birthday party long in the planning and indeed in the execution. But who's invited to the birthday party? Well, the answer of course is everybody is. We all are. 
I often found myself wondering how bewildering the disciples' message must have been to the people of the first century. This promise of good news that was to the poor as well as the rich, to the illiterate as well as the literate, to women as well as men, to slave and free, to Jew and Gentile. The invitation is to all. And that liberal and Catholic invitation is made to everybody today as well. It's to you and me, to people of every class and creed and capacity. The Saviour died for all. We are all invited, every single one of us. All we have to do is accept the invitation. You know, May is a, an expensive month for me. It's, it's almost as expensive as Christmas. You see, the birthdays of my sister Elizabeth, my sister-in-law Sarah and my sister-in-law Naomi all fall in May. It costs me an arm and a leg. Their birthdays are on the 8th, 9th and 10th of the month. One great advantage of this is that I am three times more likely to remember their birthdays than I am anybody else's, including my own. But it's natural that I want to buy them presents. But what about this birthday party that we're thinking about today? This is a birthday party that turns everything upside down, turns it on its head, because the birthday gifts are for all of us. For the disciples on the day of Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit is a gift which fills them with an energy and a joy, a focus that they've never experienced before. Love bubbles up in their hearts and it's, it's as real an experience as the three years of Jesus' earthly ministry that they had shared with him. And it empowers them to carry out Jesus' final commission to them, to go and preach the good news to the ends of the earth. I've borrowed quite heavily uh, this morning uh, uh, from one of the commentaries by David Bender. And he uses an arresting phrase. He says that the disciples on the day of Pentecost discovered their own authentic voices. I love that phrase, their own authentic voices. There's something very special about our own authentic voice. And by that, you know, I see it as a metaphor for our personality, our character, the way that we are. And what the Spirit does is it takes that and infuses it with something of God. We are each of us unique and precious to God, and he's endowed us with gifts and skills so that we can each love and serve. But the marvellous gift to the church is that these gifts are not just individual. The coming of the Spirit calls us to come together into community, into church, to work together, to serve one another, to engage with the struggles of the world. And that's what I think the true intention of Walking Day was all about. It was saying, you know, we wanted to take the church and take it out into the world, into the streets. It was certainly the experience of the disciples on that first day of Pentecost. Do we need to wait for the end of lockdown to be driven out to share this good news? The gifts of the Spirit to you and me don't require our Sunday best or a marching band. We are able to share our love and concern for others through prayer and care and gifts of loving kindness wherever we are, lockdown or not. 
The spirit is endlessly creative. And if we listen to the spirit's prompting, there will be a thousand ways in which we can act even today. And now Richard and Rose Lancaster are going to lead our prayers of intercession. We are now going to pray for others. When we say, Lord, whatever we can do to help, would you please respond, help us to do it gladly. Let us pray. God of creation, God of eternity, we pray for your world. You know our needs before we ask. So we come now, not just for ourselves, but for our neighbours in the world, that we can build together to show others your love. Lord, whatever we can do to help, help, help us, us to, to do, do it, it gladly. Lord, at this time of Pentecost, the birthday of your church, we rejoice in the wonderful gift of the Spirit. Talk of birthdays also makes us think of those who have had their birthdays during the COVID-19 lockdown, unable to celebrate in the traditional way, but nevertheless finding novel new ways to enjoy the company of others, remotely via the, the marvel of the internet. We pray for all those who are self-isolating, for those whom the internet has become a lifeline, and pray for those of us who have the technical knowledge will help those who are less familiar stay connected. Lord, whatever we can do to help, help, help us, us to, to do, do it, it gladly. gladly. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, then you will be there with them. But this time it's impossible for there to be more than two or three of us in one place. So it's a comfort to know that however we may meet, singly, in pairs or together with others virtually that by the miracle of the spirit you are there with us we pray for all those who are working to provide our worship at this time lord whatever we can do to help help, help us, us to, to do, do it, it gladly we pray for the world when every television news bulletin Every newspaper and every radio report seems to be about COVID-19. We pray that we don't lose sight of the other needs of the world. We pray for all those who are suffering from war and civil conflict and from natural disasters. We especially pray for the victims of Cyclone Amfam in Bangladesh and Eastern India. COVID-19 and social distancing measures made mass evacuations more difficult, with shelters unable to be used to full capacity and people afraid and reluctant to move to shelters for fear of contracting the virus. Lord, whatever we can do to help, help, help us, us to do, do it, it gladly. In a crisis such as COVID-19, it is sometimes hard to see anything but the negatives. And alongside the suffering and death, there have been so many things to gladden our hearts. The mobilization of armies of volunteers, both nationally and locally, to help those in need. Here in Nelsey, the COVID-19 help group was quickly mobilized to provide help. Shopping, collecting prescriptions, lending books and puzzles, and coordinating local pubs providing meals for those self-isolating and those thrown into financial hardship because of the lockdown. There is already a strong feeling that after the current crisis, a renamed help group should continue to build on the community working together. We pray for all those providing vital services and for those helping and caring for others either as professionals or as volunteers. Lord, whatever we can do to help, help, help us, us to do it gladly. Lord, one of the unexpected consequences of the lockdown is that people have been forced to stay at home and take their exercise locally. And this in turn has made people more aware of the wonders of nature and your creation that are outside their own front doors 
and in their gardens. The reduced traffic and aircraft flights have dramatically improved the air quality in cities and towns around the world, and people have started to realise that there are opportunities to do things in a more caring and sustainable way in the future. As the world faces an unprecedented climate change, climate crisis, we pray for the politicians and world leaders that they can grasp this opportunity to protect your precious creation. Lord, whatever we can do to help, help, help us, us to do, do it, it gladly. We pray for those within our family who are in need of comfort and strength at this time. We pray for the eight churches in the Gordano Valley Circuit, for their members and their ministers. And we pray for any others whose needs we now remember in a moment of quiet. Lord, whatever we can do to help, help, help us, us to, to do, do it gladly. gladly. And finally for ourselves, we pray that we will always be caring, that we will try to build our lives together with others for your glory. Please use us, Lord. Lord, we offer these prayers in the knowledge that you are always listening and in the assurance that through the power of your Holy Spirit, all things are possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rose and Richard. And thank you to everyone who has participated uh, in this podcast or enabled it to be disseminated. It's possible to join a, a further prayer event this evening at 8 o'clock. Uh, Deborah mentioned it last week. Uh, it's a gathering of Christians from right across the southwest and from all denominations. It's an online prayer event and if you go to www.southwestawake.com you'll have a chance of uh, joining their Southwest Praise event this evening. Next week our service will be led by Deborah. But until then we come to our final hymn uh, that wonderful old spiritual, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray.
for the blessing this morning. I have borrowed a prayer from the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook, a prayer written by Hildegard of Bingen back in the 11th century. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, breath of all creatures, purifier of all souls, and healer of all wounds. Be fire to our heart, light to our path, and friend for our journey. Amen. <laughs>